Hey folks, back again, uh, this time with hopefully a shorter video, no promises, um, about porting my uh, QT project from QMake to CMake. So last time I made it through about 20 lines of my QMake, uh, so um, if I keep going at this rate, I'll have six more videos to cover it. So, um, But I'm hoping it'll move pretty quickly. Um, so I've actually covered uh, a bit more than I'm giving myself credit for. I've covered about down to this line here, all of the... Uh, loading in Qt basic libraries, um, setting some compiler flags, um, setting some configuration settings um, for the build. Um, so let's talk about some juicy stuff. Um, well, to start where I left off, um, I was just talking about loading in uh, the default Qt packages. Now, what is a little bit different, but not very, is loading in external packages. So um, actually, I said it's a little bit different, but it's pretty much exactly the same. Um, so I'm loading in OpenGL um, so that I may render uh, wonderful 3D things. And it's a very similar process. You call find package, OpenGL is the name of the library, and you say that it's required. And it's going to look for OpenGL and it's going to enforce that requirement um, that, it can, that it finds OpenGL. Um, once again, something that's tricky to me is how do I know what name to search for for these libraries? Um, is it case sensitive? Um, I don't know, um, but this is what worked for me. So uh, if you're using OpenGL, hopefully it'll work for you. Um, that corresponds to line 68 of my um, QMake here where I'm adding these libraries to, uh, to my QMake build. So I was a little bit disingenuous in my last video. This isn't actually all that you have to do to get libraries loaded in to your project. Um, so first step is actually finding them. So all this is doing is saying, all right, I found the library and I'm going to raise an error if I don't find it. Uh, what you then have to do is say, okay, now I actually want to link that library um, to my target. Um, and target is CMake language for the executable that I'm building. And once again, a target can also be a, a lib file. It could be static or it could be a DLL. Um, so it could be anything. But in my case, my target is an executable, which is my program that I want to run. So, um, so what libs here is doing on the QMake side is it's actually doing all of that. It's, okay, I'm finding this library. Uh, OpenGL, and I'm going to link that um, uh, during my build stage. So um, where that magic actually happens, and, and don't worry, I'm going to cover what I'm scrolling past here, is down farther, um, because you can't actually link your libraries until you've created the target. So if you'll remember in my last video, I noted uh, through a lot of scrolling uh, rapidly through this file that I'm uh, explicitly adding an executable um, given a target name that I specified. So at some point after that, I, I can link my libraries, but I cannot link my libraries um, until I've created uh, the target, which makes sense because target link libraries is saying, okay, I have a target uh, so of a, game, of a name that I've given it, um, and I'm going to link whatever libraries I specify to that target. So down here, I'm linking OpenGL, then I'm linking all of the Qt core packages. So, um, well, they're not all core packages, but um, they're all the built-ins. So um, this is pretty much what it's going to look like anytime you want to link a library. Um, so a libs plus equals command in QMake becomes two lines. Um, for OpenGL, it became first a find package line. So, all right, let me find OpenGL. Um, so that's happening here. And then I have to then link that to my executable which is happening down here. Um, so it's a little bit more to keep track of, but um, hopefully it's not two bands, uh, two, two lines for every one line. I've seen, I've seen worse. So that's covering the libraries. And forgive me if I'm jumping around here. I mentioned that it's, it's actually not really, I'd say it's probably impossible to have a one-to-one -one logical flow um, just uh, between CMake and QMake just because they function uh, a bit differently. Um, but anyway, so let's keep going through here. All right, so one thing that you can do in QMake is you can say, okay, I have a debug config, and if I'm, if I'm in debug mode, I want to do these things, and if I'm in release mode, I want to do these other things. Um, that is also possible in CMake. It's just very different. So uh, that was something that took me a, a few hours of research to figure out how to do, but you can do it. So where do I actually do that in my code here? 
Um, I actually don't set the destination directories um, di uh, like I do here in my QMake because CMake handles that uh, automatically. So you actually don't need to do that. Um, but if you do have uh, preprocessor definitions that are going to be different between debug and release mode, uh, then it's, it's really useful to know how to do that. So I am actually doing that in a number of places, but I want to find a specific one. Uh, I have a section where I make my defines. Yes. So here's my preprocessor defines. So um, first off, it's going to be um, a little bit different between CMake and QMake. Um, so in QMake, whenever I have a defines plus equals something, I'm adding a preprocessor definition. Um, in CMake, definitions can mean a number of different things. So every time I would add a definition in QMake, I have to prepend it with a hyphen D to say, okay, this is a preprocessor definition. Um, and then I can add them the same as I would in QMake. So you'll see I have um, ported some of my flags over, um, QT no uh, debug output. I actually don't think I ported that over because you don't, uh, because I figured I didn't need that maybe. Um, right, okay, here we go. I, I did do that, um, I take it back. So yes, here is my uh, variable I'm creating called debug definitions. So uh, I'm just porting over, all right, debug mode. It's not case sensitive. Um, and then I'm taking uh, my release definitions and I'm porting over QT no debug output. So um, hold on, I'm losing, losing track here. Okay, I don't wanna say the wrong things. Here we go, this makes more sense. Right, so here in my configuration lines 30 to 42, uh, 37 to 42 rather, um, in my debug mode, I'm setting a debug mode uh, preprocessor definition. So I'm uh, also doing that in the CMake side, um, you know, and since I found that, um, I've noticed that I forgot the preprocessor flag. So it's actually good that I'm going through this. So add your preprocessor flag um, so that um, it knows that it is a compile. Oh my goodness, I actually don't need that. I take it all back. Sorry, I'm relearning this as I'm going through it and I just built this yesterday. So um, CMake has a command target compile definitions, uh, and that's different than add definitions. So everything I said before was true. If you're using add definitions, you need to prepend your uh, definition with uh, hyphen D if it's a preprocessor definition. However, target compile definitions specifically is meant to take preprocessor definitions, so you don't need to prepend it with uh, the hyphen D. So it's not necessary for target compile definitions. It is necessary for add definitions. Um, anyway, long story short, these lines in QMake are doing exactly what these lines in CMake are doing. So I'm creating a debug and release set of definitions, and then I'm setting them for my target. Um, public just means that other targets can see these definitions as well. Um, and then I'm using what's called a generator in CMake to say, okay, all this stuff pretty much means, all right, in debug mode, these are my debug definitions, and in release mode, these are my release definitions. And this gets expanded out um, during that build time um, in CMake and sets things the right way. Um, you can only use these generators within functions that are compatible with them, so don't be like me and try to use them like in just around the CMake space. It doesn't like that at all. So they won't expand out properly if you do that. Um, so yeah, this is how you would do um, specify uh, debug versus release for uh, preprocessor defines, but it's actually a little bit different if you're targeting libraries. So what I also do in my QMake is I add a bunch, I have a bunch of different libraries, and I don't want to go through all of them because look at this, this is a mess. Um, but they all behave in very similar ways. Um, you have a, an include path that you have to add and then you have some library files that you have to find, right? So for example, I have uh, free type here, which is, um, lets me, uh, helps me process uh, fonts and font files. Um, and to add that library uh, in Qt, what I do is I, okay, I add the include directory to my include path, and then I uh, link that library. So to do the same thing in CMake, 
what I would do is I would go, okay, um, use target include directories. So that's equivalent to appending to your include path in CMake. Um, and then I would uh, specify my target name once again. Um, I, I'm saying private this time. I'm, I'm all over the place with my convention, but for this use, usage, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm saying, okay, look for free types include directory uh, relative to my uh, current uh, CMake list file, um, and then up a level, and then you know find the include. So these these two lines are uh, equivalent. Um, and then I'm calling find library, which once again um, uh, is similar to find package. It, it, it looks through CMake's uh, search directories to find the um, library that you specify. Um, I've added a few um, options here. Um, find library works a little bit differently than find package. Um, it puts out the uh, final directory of the library that it finds uh, into whatever variable you specify. So in this case, I'm uh, setting free type debug lib to the path that is found by looking for a library free type with uh, with the name free type, um, and then I'm giving it a hint. So I'm saying, look here for that, um, which is the folder where it's in. So it'll find it um, once I give it that hint. Um, it wasn't behaving for me if I didn't give it a hint, it was having a hard time finding that library. So um, the hint uh, can be useful. So yeah, that is how to add a library. Um, oh, well, final step, uh, target link libraries. Um, that is uh, something I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, you're just linking uh, that library that you just found to your uh, target executable. Um, one option here that I think is important to know is uh, you can specify debug versus optimized. Now this is the same as what I'm doing in QMake here where I have a debug library versus a release version of that library. So it's all one line in CMake, uh, which is weird, right? Um, but it's, it's built in to know that uh, users are going to want to do this. So debug is the debug version, optimize is the release version. The terminology is different, but it's the same exact principle. Here I have a debug version of the library I'm adding and a release version. Here I'm uh, taking that path that I found from find library, setting that as the debug version of the library and taking the path uh, for the release version and doing the same. So, and all this extra stuff I have here, um, this is all just doing that for all of the different libraries I have. Um, here there's a whole bunch of libraries for physics. Um, so you don't, so there you go. We just knocked out, you know, like uh, almost a hundred lines of my code. It's just adding all of my different libraries. Um, it takes up a lot of space, but um, it's not so bad once you understand it. Um, one other thing I do want to mention is how to detect uh, 64 versus 32 bit, um, because that is something um, I had to do um, in uh, QMake uh, that I wasn't sure how to port over to CMake. Now I'm actually not sure if I do that in this project file specifically. Uh, 32, let's see if I can find 32 bit. Um, yeah, I, so my CMake is actually more um, robust than my QMake right now because I didn't check for the uh, bit size of my system in my QMake. Um, but how you would do that in CMake is you, um, the most robust way, uh, as, as Google has told me, is to check this CMake size of void pointer variable. And if that is equal to eight, you have a 64 bit system. And if it's, uh, I assume equal to four, you have a 32 bit system. Um, but um, so that's my current check. Um, and there apparently are a number of different ways you can do that according to Stack Overflow, uh, but people don't like those other ways. Uh, this is apparently the most robust one. So anyway, uh, here I'm just loading in two different versions of my library depending on whether I have a 64 or a 32-bit system. And then ideally I would do that for each of these libraries um, if I wanted them to work under a number of different configurations. Right now I'm actually on 32-bit. I do plan on migrating to 64-bit and uh, CMake will make that a lot easier. So I think that is a good place to end this video. Um, hopefully my next one is my final one. I want to cover um, building for different operating systems in a little bit more detail um, and maybe also cover some miscellaneous that I might have missed earlier. Um, all right. Uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully you guys found this useful. Uh, until next time.